Check this out news. We connect the streets. All right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, my name is Osei Kwaku, Osei the Dark Secrets, and I'm the host of Check This Out News, and my co-host Alex Bradbury is here, and we Hello. have a maven uh, in the room with us, a boss. Uh, actually, I want to trade T-shirts, man. I'm gonna give him a Wakanda ATL T-shirt, Triller <laughs> T-shirt. But we have the CEO of Triller, uh, Mr. Mike Lou. We want to welcome you to the show, man. They're dubbing Triller as the new uh, TikTok, but I know you've been probably in the trenches for a much longer time, uh, refining this whole process, man, and uh, getting prepared. Um, so let's jump right into it, Mike. How you doing, bro? I'm good. I'm good. And absolutely, send me your address. We'll ship you a bunch of uh, trailer, trailer gears for you to rep. All right. I appreciate that. That's what I'm talking about, man. Um, so, you know, uh, just so everybody understands, Triller is an entertainment platform built for creators, a social video community where you can show the world who you are by capturing flawless videos and sharing them in seconds. Express yourself and connect with the content you love. And it's currently sitting at the top of the App Store. Now, Mike Lou, that ain't no small feat. That means that you're really doing what you need to do and it's resonating. Um, so kudos to you on that. Uh, it's one of several video-led uh, social applications, including Instagram Reels and Bytes that are riding a wave of anti-TikTok sentiment. Now, um, I understand that uh, President Trump has threatened to ban TikTok from the US uh, as recently as two weeks ago. Triller has been on a press offensive to tout the apps the differences to his rivals. And I think that you guys have done an excellent job. I've seen Chance the Rapper, uh, Cardi B posted something. So that means it's really, uh, really resonating in a lot of ways, man. So I want you to tell us about Triller in your words, though, Mike, because I think that hearing it from the eyes of the visionary, it really helps to really paint the picture in a different capacity. Great. Sure. And thank you for the kind words. Um, yeah, you know, Triller has been very lucky and in, in, in being in the right place at the right time, and that's, that's what people are telling us. But I think a lot of it is really we've been positioned for this moment uh, for the last four years, right? Like this wasn't an overnight thing that just kind of happened to us. Um, this is a culmination of four years of hard work and blood, sweat, and tears from our from our team. And for us, when we first set out to build our product and our company, we always wanted to build it with a very clear identity and a, a clear DNA of what who we are and that is music we've always been like very close and tied to the music side of the industry we've been uh, working closely with our label partners uh, as well as our publishers to ensure that Triller is the the destination for music discovery content discovery so it's not a surprise now that people like Cardi B um, Sweaty and all the biggest stars out there have recognized Triller as um, you know the place to go. In fact, we recently collaborated with Billboard uh, to include our own Billboard charts. Uh, which, if you go to Sweetie's like Instagram, like that's like her first post is that she actually hit number one uh, in the Triller Billboard Top 40. Right. If you go to Offset's Instagram, you'll see that he posted about his last week. So we've been really entrenched in this uh, side of the entertainment industry. Uh, and it really speaks because that's always been our DNA. Okay. I have a question on that um, because it does sound like you really do gear towards hip hop and the culture. And so can you explain a little bit about why that is such a big part of your, your model and, and the target audience? Sure, absolutely. If we were doing this in my other room, you will see there's, I have like my sneaker, sneakerhead collection in the back. Okay. I, I can't really see it, but I have my more Oh. <laughs> so oh. no, I, some of this from myself, uh, no, I, I grew up on hip hop. I grew up around the culture. I believe it's actually where everything that has ever been popular started, right? Like if you look at, the history of beats. If you look at the history of like, um, I don't know, any popular consumer brand, right? It's really, it, it originates in the culture. And I believe for us, a lot of it happened organically, right? Like we're actually extremely popular in Atlanta. Um, that's actually where the birthplace of Triller really started. Uh, it started with the high school kids uh, outside of Atlanta. Uh, Io and Teo were one of the first kids to jump on our platform. Um, yeah. And then they did the Rolly Rolly song that mm -hmm. blew up. Right. Um, the backpack kid, um, Russell, you know, he was a part of the platform. They all kind of know each other. Right. So I think 
if I were to date back to the very beginning of trailer, like it started with the kids in Atlanta, right? And it started because we had an affinity for hip hop. It started because when we feature music, when we feature content, a lot of it is from, it's, it's part of the culture, right? And then as a company, as we shifted over the years, um, we had made a very conscious choice to stay with that, to be true to that, right? We didn't want to, you know, just because, you know, something is popular or this is popular to deviate away from our identity. And our identity has always been part of the culture and part of hip hop and part of that growth. And it just so happens, you know, after years of this, you know, hip hop and the culture has now risen to be number one, not just in a musical genre, but like Virgil Abloh, right? You know, moving from LVMH to now like designing like cars and beyond, right? Uh, we go from, you know, Black Panther, you're wearing a Wakanda shirt, to becoming the, the number one top grossing movie in Marvel. So as part of that, we've just been authentic and true to that. And we've been lucky enough where it's just it's just grown with it. Yeah. Yeah. Very, very dope. It's interesting you, you mentioned Atlanta, um, Mike, because I'd like to understand for you on a personal level, you mentioned Ao and Teo, and they certainly took off with that song. And what you've seen, uh, particularly as of late, is the emergence or the reemergence of how important dance is uh, with all of these different um, apps and what have you. So what does Atlanta mean as it relates to the future of Triller? And what do you see in the forthcoming future? Yeah, um, you know, it's it's Atlanta is like one of the hearts of Triller, right? We're actually actively looking for an office space there. We were looking for one before COVID, but then COVID happened and, uh, you know, kind of delayed some of the, the, the actions there, but we're actively looking for a creative space. Uh, we want to invite artists there. We've actually done several events in Atlanta. Um, I myself have been out there, uh, met a bunch of the, the, the influencers, but also a lot of the music guys, right? Um, both Quavo and Takeoff are investors in Trailer. Um, we have deep roots with a lot of the Atlanta hip hop, right? Like, you know, call it the flow rap, call it the Migos rap. Um, and then even Chance. I can literally trace how Chance got onto the platform with one of our Atlanta influencers, uh, a DJ main DJ Suede. Uh, so Suede knew one of the producers from Chance. They were together in the studio, mixing the song in Atlanta, and they were playing around with Triller. And then that led to Chance playing with it which led to him making a trailer video to Cardi B song, which he sent to Cardi B and then Cardi B posted it, right? Like, and I can trace all of that back to Atlanta, right? So for us, like, it's the heart of like trailer. Um, we, we used to go all the time before COVID and uh, it's definitely gonna be one of the centers for, for Triller's future as well. That's really interesting because you talk about Triller in the way that the, the content is really created. It's really different from other platforms. How does it differ from the others and the type of, of things that you produce on it? Yeah, so you know, one thing that we've been very um, keen on is as we built out the platform, uh, we wanted to focus on creative content, right? So if you look at like uh, Instagram, right? Instagram is something where you post what we call status content. Like you're posting like, hey, this is where I'm at. This is what I'm eating. Like, here's who I'm with. Uh, this is what I'm doing, right? These are all status content. You're going to see almost zero of that on Triller, right? Because when you pop up Triller, what you're going to see is like people dancing, people creating skits, you know, people dressing up their pets, you know, people putting one of my favorite videos. It's a pug wearing a Supreme hoodie, driving a toy Mercedes, <laughs> rolling down to like, I think it was their two chain song, you know, just like, <laughs> It's just creative content, right? And as we progress as a platform, what we've noticed is that people will come to Triller to post that creative content. They're not gonna post it on Instagram, right? Because they're gonna post like, hey, this is that meal I had last night. But if I want something creative to be seen by the creative eyes in the world, they're gonna post that on Triller. So that way, from a content differentiation, from just a, an engagement perspective, when people come to Triller, they're expected to have fun. They're expected to leave with a smile mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, go from there. It provides a bit of escapism, especially right now. Then. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. I mean, the, the world is, is a tough place, obviously. Um, and, you know, people just want to smile, right, when they, when they come onto the platform. 
Right. Interesting. That leads me to uh, my next question. Now, Mike, you said the world is a tough place. And so we're going to stay on that theme for just a second, and then we'll go back to a happy place. But how did TikTok find itself in the situation it's in? And do you agree with Trump and the pressure he's put on TikTok? Um, okay, that's a tough one. So here's my view on the TikTok situation. Um, it's no secret that a lot of data is being collected uh, on TikTok, right? It's actually... Um, pretty standard, I guess, for for a, an app based out of Beijing to be doing this level of data collection. Um, but I think it's the first time that people have really started to notice it. And the fact that it's all of that is being sent over uh, to Beijing, uh, I think it's becoming worrisome. Um, I think it's made its way all the way to the highest um, position of power. And I believe the president, regardless if you agree with him, he has, you know, done the right thing in terms of protecting its citizens and its constituents, uh, making sure that this is something that not going to go by uh, without a care, right? Like, because I think the reverse of this, which is in China, you can't open Facebook. There is no YouTube login. There is no Twitter or Snapchat. There's nothing even remotely close that you can look at, right? And they purposely shut it down because the U.S. companies will never uh, give their data to Beijing, right? It's not something that they would ever do. So I think we're now finally seeing this um, transition where, you know, I don't think we've been playing in, a, in, the, in the fair stage, right? Where, you know, in China, this is okay, but in the U.S. it's not okay. Like, I, I'm not sure where that goes. So regardless of... Um, how one feels about our president, uh, I believe he's doing the right thing. Okay, definitely strong. Um, wh what are your thoughts on Microsoft or Oracle possibly acquiring TikTok? What do you think of that? Um, you know, I, I'm hearing rumors every day. Um, I, I really can't uh, speak to rumors. I, you know, believe that, you know, the identity of a company is really important for the growth of the company. Sure. Um, and I believe that, you know, Whatever happens to TikTok, whether it gets banned completely or it finds its home, you know, I think the identity of TikTok will forever change, right? And we've seen it, right? Like TikTok is never going to be the same, right? Sure. No matter what happens after after this. Um, they, I think, um, did one thing, which is broken the trust. It's almost like, you know, when you create a social network, you kind of create this unspoken social contract you have with your customers, right? That says like, hey... We trust you, you trust us. The hard work you're putting into it, the millions of followers you're building, that trust us. Like we'll take care of it. Those are those are your hard work. We're gonna reward, uh, you'll be rewarded and so on and so forth. There's like an unspoken verbal or a commitment around that. Um, but what that has, what has happened to that is that has been really like shifted, right? Like overnight, India banned TikTok. India accounted for 40% of TikTok's audience, which is, you know, you can read all about that for a rumor to be. Um, but even if, you know, we're, you know, close to that, that means anyone that you've built in terms of followers, you just lost 40% of them. Yeah. What, you know, what happened? it's crazy just hearing you speak on it. And, and one, let me uh, acknowledge, Mike, and thank you for uh, your transparency. I mean, you, I, I look at you um, in our conversation as a cultural curator, right? So you look like you got a cool and CEO. Uh, what, what kind of sneakers are you rocking uh, today, right? I actually, got, I actually got some new ones. You want to see them? I, yeah, I got them. Uh, Please. Uh, this is, Please. I, and then I need to know what size you got, Mike. Oh, no, I need to know what size you got because uh, I just got these today. These are the, these are the Sakai's, the, okay. the Jordan 1 collabs. I just got these yeah, today. Jordan, huh? I like them. I like yeah, them. So, I like, you know, I've been a big fan of the Sakai, like um, the the lows, but like this is the first one that I've seen with the highs because I, yeah. I do like the highs more, but these That's are the ones that's got to them. <laughs> Mike, very slick. Goes well with that silly shirt, I can tell, I'm sure. <laughs> that's right. You guys send me your shoes out. We'll, we'll, we'll send you some heat. Okay. And you too, uh, Alex. You too, Alex. Yeah. yeah, I'm sure it's like, <laughs> we're on. Oh, no, hey, you can't tell me twice. I'm sure, Alex, we're good. We're good. You no, know? no, I did. To put it in perspective, for our um, last Christmas party, 
uh, I gave every single Triller employee a pair of kicks, and no two kicks were the same. Oh, so wow. I went out, yeah, so I went out and bought a unique pair of shoes that I think uh, kind of has our, you know, the, your personality into it and made sure there was no two that were the same. So every single person in the company got a new f- fresh pair of kicks. Well, you know, I think Alex, we're, uh, we're uh, now uh, employees or contractors with Trevor. Agree. Eating men's, okay? So, Mike, we'll, we'll, I want to say this. Getting back to Trillin, you know, in detail, uh, who are some of your, your favorite hip-hop artists? Because obviously, as a cultural curator, you know, you're, you're, you're helping to make sure it, it uh, transitions from the top down. People don't yeah. understand how important leadership is in company culture. And I think that, you know, kind of seeing how you move a little, even a snapshot into this, I'm sure it is uh, on par with uh, Silicon Valley. But, you know, who are some of your favorite, you know, uh, uh, hip hop artists? Yeah, I would say like, oh, actually, this is a good story. So uh, 21 is actually one of my favorites right now. Um, and in fact, uh, he's a, he, he's an investor, right? So I'll tell you the story. Of, um, I met him um, as we were doing an investor presentation and, you know, I told his manager like, oh, I'm actually one of his biggest fans, but what I'll do is I'll actually open up my Spotify and I'll show him my, you know, Spotify does that, like your 2019 playlist where it shows your most listened to song. Mm-hmm. So in my meeting with 21, I'm like, hey, you know, I'm one of your biggest fans. He's like, oh yeah, that's cool, that's cool. I'm like, no, 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 I'm serious. So I go up to him, I pull up my Spotify and I show him that the number yeah. one most played song yeah. It's, uh, um, nice. it's 21. So he was like, mm-hmm. okay, okay, yeah, I'll fuck with you. So, <laughs> so, so I should have swear. <laughs> no, it's all good. It's real. Um, yeah, it's real. So, like, you know, I think that uh, I like, I mean, I like J. Cole uh, from the old school days, like Big E, um, you know, Tupac, obviously, uh, from the from the early 2000 days. Like, I like Nas a lot. Um, now I think what we transition to, in fact, like, you know, one of the cool things that I've seen now about hip hop is that it's actually made its way into India, yeah. uh, very recently. Nas actually had a lot to do with that by creating this movie together called Gully Gang, um, which is like their version of like eight mile. Um, wow. and it's literally broken hip hop inside India. Um, it you was, know crazy. Mm-hmm. it's like hip hop is the music of oppressed people everywhere, mm-hmm. you know? I think I, yeah. I think anybody in any country, I mean, they'll show me like you know um, videos of people who are like spitting lyrics in their own language, and you can just tell they have an energy, a passion, and so, yeah. you, know, you have no choice but to really respect it. So that's a beautiful thing, man. I mean, Slumdog Millionaires, I love it. That's you know, right. That's right. I love that it's, it's it's broken all these boundaries and it's so global. Um, for you, I mean, I know you mentioned Twenty One, and you mentioned. You know, just your love of music, obviously, and just culture as a whole. What is it like dealing with the management, the labels? I know you guys have created some really strategic uh, relationships that mm-hmm. allow things to really breathe and, and move organically. What has that process been like for you? It seems like it's seamless. Um, uh, you know, the the music industry has been, you know, really uh, great in terms of working with, and they've all been very open to to working with Triller. Um, there's so many of them, right? And we're such a small team that we're doing our best to get to every single one of them uh, with uh, whether it's the labels or the publishers. But our goal is to make sure that, you know, when an artist blows up, when an artist is discovered, the entire ecosystem wins, meaning the artist should get credit for it, right? And that's why we've created our own billboard. That's why we've created and termed uh, social streaming uh, where credits, you know, when you're on, when you listen to a song on Triller, um, that actually goes through your stream count, right? Um, so everyone kind of wins. It goes into all your gold, platinum records. Um, all that stuff is is part of the entire ecosystem. So for us, the music industry is one of our closest allies, um, and in fact, most of them are, you know, investors and equity owners of Triller as well. So I have a question on that. So how does that work within your content creators? Because you need the content creators to, to match the music to mm-hmm. the thing. So how how does that work when we are so used to going from one to the other? Yeah, I mean, you know, we obviously have our, our you know, playlists. We have our way of featuring certain dances. Uh, we have a way of helping certain, certain launches. 
Um, you know, we're 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 working with uh, NLE Chapa right now. Uh, one of his releases, really talented kid, um, who just now signed with Warner, um, coming out of uh, United. Like again, like we we feel like we're we're so in tune with these kids because like we follow them. We're trying to be supportive. And the way that influencers work is that they will tend to go where you know they can get the most reach because influencers themselves they're always looking for ways to do something different or take something that is popular but blow it up to a, a, a mega stage. So mm -hmm. in those in those veins, um, you know, we've been very uh, fortunate that a lot of big influencers of all different different types have joined the platform uh, and, and been uh, really popular with uh, what they're doing. So I have a question on that because you mentioned that there's like this cultural phenomenon that there's this contract buy between you and the user. So who who really does own the followers? Will we ever get to a point where you can just extract that data and as a content creator, you own and you also win in the event that we move from one platform to another? Mm -hmm. You know, I think in, in my way of looking at this is that, you know, the creators own, right? Like our platform is built on the lifeblood of a creator. Like if the creators don't don't enjoy what we're doing, if they, they move off, like, you know, that's that's triller, right? So we want to make sure that we provide a stability, foundation, trust with our content creators um, from all aspects of the angle, meaning that we encourage them, we support them. And that number it's it's theirs, right? And if if we've seen a shift, right? And if they move off platform, uh, whether it's YouTube or somewhere else, a lot of them follow, right? They're they're loyal loyal people to their creators. I think it's so cool that you created an opportunity for people to literally like market themselves, create a brand, a personal brand, and literally from anywhere in the world. How do you see that impacting the platform moving forward? Um, you know, we want to be part of the ecosystem, right? Like as, as a platform, we really are here for our customers, right? Like we focus uh, on the product, you know, we want to build the best camera tool. We want to find the best recommendation system to surface, regardless if you have one follower for a zillion followers, we want to surface our content uh, to as many people as possible. So for us, like we're very much a heads down company uh, focused on building the best experience, the best technology and the best product for our customers. And in the way that they built their ecosystem around their influencers, around their brand, we want to be as helpful on that as possible, right? Um, but we are very much focused on our core competency, which is our technology and our platform. Awesome. awesome. That said, um, and, and speaking to the marketing, what are the opportunities for advertisers on Trilla? Um, just getting their messaging out there. Yeah, you know, we've partnered with a lot of great uh, brands already. Um, Boost Mobile, which uh, you know worked with us on our what we call Step Up to the Mic Challenge, uh, which is our version of American Idol, uh, where people were submitting you know uh, different clips of their singing and. The winner actually got a song made, uh, produced by Murder Beats. Uh, he's one of the biggest producers out there. Um, and I'll have a line from from uh, uh, Migos, uh, sorry, from, from uh, Quavo and Takeoff of the Migos, as well as part of the song. So, you know, Boost Mobile really believed in that vision and they really wanted to be a part, uh, participant in that. And they have been great partners. So we look for all brands, um, especially brands who really gravitate toward the culture uh, and i think now more than ever like i think all brands now um want to be part of that like as you saw from the explosion of like off-white and virgil you saw the explosion of like all the collabs like i think gucci literally was doing this and then all of a sudden streetwear came in and like Whoop. right um i think everyone from from that side will, will eventually want to come and work with Triller, and we're open with um, everyone okay so let me ask you, is data collection, uh, owning your data, privacy, um, we know it's a big deal. How safe uh, is that as it relates to the Triller app? How safe is Triller? Yeah, we are very careful with data. And if we collect the, the bare minimum, really just to service better content for you. Um, but we take that stuff very seriously. We've had, you know, two independent outside companies, you know, very recently go through um, and look at the, 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 the accuracy as well as the protection around a data pipeline. We take it pretty seriously. 
How, how does Triller use AI to make recommendations and decide for me what I might like or be into or discover something new for me? Yeah, I know the, I mean, it's kind of our secret sauce, but at a high level, I mean, it's just based on your, you know, what view throughs you have, uh, what engagements you have on, on content. You know, there's a lot of papers about this, uh, just on how YouTube does it. Um, so for us, we're, we're very much um, the same way and recommending the best types of content uh, based on your behavior and how you uh, engage with the content. And it's not just like, oh, we see that you like cars, we're just gonna send you car videos. It's more like, okay, we know you like cars, but have you thought about this this uh, cat video that's really funny? Or have you thought about this funny meme video that's really funny? So we'll surface other content in there to see if there are continue engagement and we'll eventually build out like your interest profile, um, but also show like, hey, here's what's really popular on the internet or here's what's really popular on Triller um, mm -hmm. right now. So I, I personally love memes. You know, I can watch memes all day. I love sharing memes with my friends. I'm one of those guys. Mm -hmm. Um, so my, my algorithm has a lot of memes in there, um, which I enjoy. You know, I'll just flip through like 20 minutes of memes, but other people like love, uh, cat and dog videos, which we have a lot of, right. Um, other people like sports and travel videos, which we have a ton. Just those I think are the best in terms of visuals on the platform. Like someone taking a drone and flying it over the ocean, you know, someone jumping out of a helicopter, uh, tons of great content. And um, I think that's one thing I'm super proud of as the CEO is that the diversity of our content on the platform is incredible. And I'm extremely excited um, about that as well. Very nice. You're definitely a rock star with it. Uh, I've got to ask you this, uh, two questions. Um, how long can you make your Triller videos and how do you get paid on Triller? Uh, so right now for music videos, you can make up to 60 seconds, um, for videos that you would want to upload that can go longer. Um, for your second question, how do you get paid on Triller right now? We don't have, a, uh, at least announced yet, uh, a package for, uh, creators to make money on the platform yet. It's something that we're working on. Um, and it will come down in the future, but right now we as Triller, um, aren't paying out creators yet. But what we're doing is we're helping creators um, match with brands um, that, you know, are looking for influencer campaigns. We're looking for, you know, one thing that Triller has built is a lot of the kids on there are like tastemakers, right? Like if, you know, King Imprint from Atlanta, like if he like gets on something, people will know like, okay, this is probably about to pop or like this is what's coming up next. Um, they are the ones who, who, who really know this stuff. And, you know, I feel like I know a lot of the Atlanta kid creators, like Wool Vicky, um, been following her for a long time. Um, really interesting content, but you know, people look to them as, uh, you know, content creators. And a lot of these guys uh, and girls um, have done an amazing job of curating their identity and their brand. And uh, Triller loves to be part of that. Very nice. Um, I, I want to ask you this as well, Mike, and, and perhaps, you know, you're familiar or growing familiar with this genre, but Afrobeat. So Afrobeat is, you know, a genre in, in Atlanta. Um, mm -hmm. I think it's round zero for it. We, we really opened it up in this market. Um, what uh, is the potential on Triller for Afrobeat artists? Uh, actually, funny you should mention that. So we launched in Nigeria this earlier this year uh, because we believe that Afrobeats is actually the next frontier, uh, a lot of the music. And we actually became the number one app in Nigeria for three months straight, meaning we're downloading more than WhatsApp, Facebook, YouTube. And we have a huge, huge presence in Nigeria. Um, you probably don't see a lot of it because the, the content is actually you know, localized. Um, the artists are localized there as well, but we've seen a massive explosion of Afrobeats because because of our roots in hip hop, it was an easy transition. And Afrobeats as a, as a genre is starting to make its way into the US, like Rock Nation's heavily invested in it. Uh, Atlanta Records heavily invested into it. Um, and we have big stars like Mr. Easy um, on the platform. We have big stars. Um, that are creating challenges. In fact, 
we even saw one of the artists create a like a highway, like a billboard on the on the main Nigerian highway that showed a thriller logo and asking their fans to make a thriller video. We didn't pay for that. Yeah. Like there are literally billboards about thriller in Nigeria that artists are paying for out of their own pocket because they know how sticky and how how big of an audience we have there. So to answer your question, absolutely. Afrobeats is like, I think the next frontier in music, it's, you know, driving a lot of engagement out of, um, you know, South Africa down to West Africa. It's making its way up into Paris, right? Which is like the, the second largest hub for hip hop outside of the US. And it's starting to get noticed by the, the East Coast like labels, right? So I think Atlanta labels have, I know a couple of them have been like signing young Afrobeat kids. Uh, Empire uh, out here on the West Coast, you know, they're doing a lot here as well. Um, but I definitely believe that's a, that's a big uh, part of the future. We should definitely talk offline, uh, Mike, because I think there's some uh, some some real stickiness there. It's yeah, good, we'll call it some good foo foo and some jello. Uh, <laughs> we'll Amazing. That, Amazing. Yeah, we'll make it come together. Um, I, I, you know, I really think that what you all are doing, I love the uh, creativity of it, and you know, just the vision, and it seems like. You know, you guys have a really dynamic culture that kind of carries itself over into the app itself. So, you know, I can see, and you know, I, I find that with a lot of uh, companies out, you know, in, in, in Silicon Valley, there's just a cooler, hipper vibe naturally. Um, so I just kind of understand what the opportunity is. How do you feel about the advent of all these other platforms now? So you have Reels on IG. It's almost like, you know, and, and, and Seemingly what's happening to TikTok probably opens up the gateway for um, other platforms to do their thing. And I think obviously Triller can really uh, take it to the top. But what are your thoughts on the current ecosystem as it relates to that? Yeah, um, it's a good question. I think, you know, I'll answer it in two ways. Like um, the first way is I, I think it's there's no better time than now to be a content creator, right? Like if you got a phone, you know, you, you love making content, you should be out there making content because there's no better time than now because everyone, and whether it's Facebook, us, TikTok, whoever else, right? Like they're all buying for the best content creators to come out. So it's 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 their time to shine. Um, so if you just have a phone and if you got an idea, if you got a voice, like I would be out there making content right now because the entire industry is buying for their attention, right? And vying for their for their a chance to be the platform for them. Uh, Triller, we have a very strong identity, and we've been able to capture a lot of that. Uh, Instagram Reels, um, you know, again, I don't I don't like to diss our competitors. Like, I read a really terrible, well, read a very strong article uh, uh, on the New York Times. I kind of you know really shafted them, and some of it I, I think really hit home in terms of why you know the industry hasn't adapted um reels as well in fact the weekend that reels launched we saw a 2x increase in our engagement and we were actually confused i'm like why is our numbers all going up uh it wasn't until later that we put the two to two together because i think a lot of people were waiting for reels to launch to see like oh am i going to come here and then realizing what it is they actually came uh to triller to to make sure that this is their home um but again you know like i said in the beginning like there's no better time than now to be a creator. And I think, you know, that's where I think the entire ecosystem, we had to do our best to make sure that we build a great home, a great, build a great foundation for those creators. Yeah. You know, I learned in a, I'm sorry, um, but just that little Nas X actually started, went viral on Triller. Can you talk a little bit about that and how that is something that could be possible for other people? Like, how did that happen? Yeah, no, Lil Nas is great. I love the story because like, and the thing is like, I, I credit, the credit really goes to him, right? Like the, the Lil Nas, like he's been doing this for a while, right? Like he's like a growth hacker. He's like, he thinks almost like a, an engineer will in terms of amplitude, amplifying his his brand out there. And he knew that Triller is where you go for to find, even though we're we're a smaller platform, but they know he knows this is where the tastemakers go, right? This is where like 
a lot of the label guys are coming to us to like ask us like, hey, who's popping, who's not? And he started on Triller. He posted his first video on Triller. Um, I remember him working with our team on you know featuring his music, and it went super viral. And then it went viral on Twitter, and then it went viral on TikTok. And you know the rest is history, right? So you know, for us, we will always be that place for people, and we encourage every single person who has talent, who has um, a love for that, to come to Triller because we want that story, right? Like. Since day one of our company, our motto has always been, we want the next Chris Brown to be discovered on Triller. Like that's, you, I've said that since day zero. That's our motto. That's who we are. Everything that we build is built toward that model. That's the problem. Yeah, I love that. Very powerful. Cool. Um, you know, Mike, we really appreciate your time and you gave us so much incredible insight. Um, I love the story. Uh, obviously, you know, it certainly looks like there's a real opportunity for uh, Triller to dominate. And it seems as if you seriously have the real um, organic and authentic relationships. I think all of that's very important. I was gonna say as it relates to reels and some of the things I've seen over uh, the last, last, you know, eight, nine years with Facebook, Instagram, I feel like there's a little bit of a backlash towards uh, Facebook or maybe even Mark Zuckerberg. I, I don't know why, but I feel like some pe see people are a bit resistant to it, more so the, the curators, like people who are really um, authentically about it because, you know, and I do think that TikTok had, had a base. I think what they provided everybody with was uh, a perspective on where things could go. And you know the creativity in terms of opening things up and where you can take that on a whole nother scale. And you know you find that this is what they say when they say this type of content, these types of content creators are dominating as opposed to traditional television um, or you know what's on network. So um, I, I'm really uh, excited to see how Triller uh, you know manifests and continues to grow. Look forward to you guys making it out here to Atlanta once COVID clears up and all that good stuff and hopefully we return to normal. And, um, you know, really want to wish you all the best. Is there anything, any any social media, anything that our our viewers should uh, know? Um, no, I mean, thank you guys for having me. Obviously, like, you know, we we love the the support and like we couldn't be here without the, the love from the, the community, right? Like we're a very small company in comparison to like a TikTok or an Instagram, like, Everyone works like tirelessly um, to get to this moment. So, and we got here because of people like you uh, who's been here to support us. So we really appreciate that back. Yeah, awesome. Alex, you got anything? No, I just want to say thank you. Congratulations on being a number one app and, and all the success. I think that it's incredible that you are working so closely with the culture, hip hop, black community to create something that creates opportunity. Um, I'm excited to see where you go and I've, I've downloaded it myself. I, it's super easy to use. And so, um, yeah, congratulations. And I'm looking forward to, to being one of your content creators. <laughs> awesome, awesome. We we'll look, look, look forward to having you. Yes. Likewise. Look, Mike, we're gonna hold you to it, man. Uh, we want our children here. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, send me your dress, send me your shoe size. I'm, I'll send you some yeah. heat, don't worry. You need to, I'm in Arizona. <laughs> yeah, yeah, don't worry. I'll send you some real good heat, real good heat. Very, 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 nice. very nice. Well, listen, brother, God bless you. And, uh, you know, continue blessings on your journey. And uh, all the best. We look forward to really staying connected with you as well, okay? Yes, of course. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Yes. Peace. Bye. Check this out news. We connect the streets.